confusion matrix. Don't you just admire these terms sometimes that they come up with? Like, why would you call something the confusion matrix when it's designed to explain things? Anyway, let's get into the confusion matrix. So last time we left off over here where we discussed false positives and false negatives, type one errors and type two errors. So the false positive is when you predict that something will happen, but it actually doesn't happen. And that's a type one error. And a false negative is when you predict that something won't happen, but it does actually happen. And that's a type two error. So let's see what we can do with these. Let's start building a matrix and we'll understand what it is exactly saying as we get along with it. So we've got the Y hat at the top. So the predicted uh, dependent variable. So whether or not we're saying that event will happen at the top. And on the left, we've got the Y, just the Y, <laughs> the actual dependent variable. So there it's telling us whether or not that event actually did happen. Now under each one of them, let's put the two different options that are available. You can either have a zero or a one. So zero for Y hat, one for Y hat, zero for Y and one for Y. And in that space between them, there's four more squares there. That's where our confusion matrix will be. So we'll start with the furthest square right away here. That is the intersection of when Y hat is one. So we're predicting something will happen or uh, the person will take up the offer or the event will occur. And at the same time, it actually did happen. So let's say, for instance, we had 50 observations in there or out of our observations, the ones that we said will happen and actually did happen, there's 50. Now let's look at the ones that didn't happen and we also said that they won't happen. So basically we said they won't happen and they actually didn't happen. So let's say that in there we have 35. So 35 of the observations, let's say in total we have 100. And 50 of them actually did happen and our prediction was that they will happen. And 35 of them, they didn't happen, but we also said that they won't happen based on our model. Now let's look at the other two squares. So can you guess from here which one is the uh, false positives and which one is the false negatives? I'll give you a second to do that. You, you can pause the video if you want to... Um, try try this on your own so the false positives or the type 1 error are at the top on the right because a type 1 error is when you're saying that something will happen but actually doesn't happen and remember the way, the way I remember it is it's not as bad as saying that something won't happen and actually does happen although that might not necessarily be the case but it's an easy way to remember it so that's our type 1 error it's up at the top over there on the right now, on the left at the bottom, we've got the false negative or the type 2 error when we're saying that something won't happen, but it actually does happen. And let's say we had 10 and 5 in them, uh, respectively. So this is your confusion matrix. And what it's telling you is it's giving you a quick overview of how well your model is performing. If you look at the diagonal, the light diagonal, uh, it won't be colored probably in in your in the report that you'll be studying but if you look at the top left and the bottom right just if you just remember in that that way it, those are the good things so in total that's how much you predicted correctly and the other diagonal so the top right and the bottom left those are the bad things those those are the observations that you weren't able to predict those are your errors so the more you have in the first diagonal the better the more you have in the second diagonal the worse uh, your model is performing and let's have a look at two ratios that you can calculate. So one, the first rate is the accuracy rate and you take the correct predicted divided by total. In our case, we predicted correctly 85, the total is 100. So if we divide 85 by 100, we get an 85% accuracy rate. And you can tell it right away just by looking at the confusion matrix, especially if you know the total number of the observations right away so you don't have to do the calculation, add, add up all the values in the matrix. Um, that way you can just divide by 100. But even by looking at the confusion matrix, you can uh, quickly uh, understand what the accuracy rate is and also the error rate. So you take the total that you um, were wrong about and you divide by the entire total. So in this case, it's uh, 15 divided by 100. It's 15% error rate. That's all for today. We'll be using the confusion matrix in our next tutorial.